Hey everybody, welcome back. We're reading Thomas Jefferson's The Art of Power. I made some good cornbread today that I'll be able to break my fast with. Um, so I'm excited for that. Uh, it's my first time making that particular recipe with cornbread. Alright, so we are on page 80 in the section titled There Is No Peace, The Revolutionary. In Richmond, Jefferson's committee's resolution on preparing the militia noted that a failure to prepare militarily would leave Virginia in evident danger. In case of invasion or insurrection, both possibilities, invasion from without or insurrection from within, felt more likely after the third week of April 1775. In Massachusetts, British troops and American colonists clashed at Lexington and Concord on Wednesday, April 19th, 1775. Lexington and Concord is actually like, if you say that to somebody in the street, Lexington and Concord, they'll vaguely just like, oh, I recognize the names. But uh, it is a place that, you know, was important. So let's, you know what, let's bracket that. Because in American history, you're going to probably have to remember that. By the end of the day, after the gunfire along a shifting 16-mile front, there were 273 British and 95 American casualties. The exact sequence of the battle is unclear, but the meaning of the bloodshed was unmistakable. As Jefferson wrote after hearing the reports, any last hopes of reconciliation were now gone. A frenzy of revenge, he added, seems to have seized all ranks of people Whew, a frenzy so it's just like balls to the wall it's just people going nuts that's interesting the painter john singleton copley wrote his half brother the flame of civil war is now broke out in america and i have not the least doubt it will rage with violence equal to that no equal to what has ever done in any other country at any time who Hmm. Well, John seems a bit hyperbolic, but uh, it wasn't the bloodiest, but indeed bloody. In Virginia, elite whites were contending with slave violence both rumored and real and with the seizure by Lord Dunmore of the supplies of gunpowder at Williamsburg. In the middle of April in Chesterfield County, not far from Albemarle, whites were alarmed for an insurrection of the slaves. In Northumberland County, two slaves set fire to a militia officer's house with a parcel of straw fixed to an end of a pole. Dunmore decided that the enemy of his enemy was his friend, that the slaves whom the whites often feared were Britain's natural allies in Virginia. I think that's an interesting thing people kind of forget, is that Britain had the idea of going to the slaves and being like, hey, we'll let you free, right? So today, uh... A globalized network if they wanted to undermine well I guess it's a tad bit different okay the strategy of looking at your enemy and then choosing who is disfranchised in their community and funding them and helping them indeed slaves should have been free so I guess you know this was a different type of example but let's say like today Let's say there's a group of people who are really disenfranchised and then the nation that's competing with you economically decides, hey, we're going to fund them and we're going to help them bring about the revolution from within and we'll help do it without and we'll combine the forces and overtake uh, our enemy. It's actually really interesting. I mean, but at least, you know, the slaves were brave at this time, you know, trying to be like, hey, let's, let's burn it down. As Thursday, April 20th, 1775, became Friday, April 21st, Royal Marines removed 15 half-barrels of gunpowder from the public magazine at Williamsburg to the HMS Magdalen, effectively disarming the Virginians. You see that? So, Royal Marines, they took half, you know, like, just so many friggin' barrels of gunpowder from the public arsenal. And this is really going to leave the people in a bad predicament. It's interesting how the past people understood the necessity of having gun rights. But I think people today are kind of going against that just because there's been mass shooters. But I think maybe it'll come back once the robots start to get more incorporated in our society. And they might, might see abuses. They might like 
start to be like, okay, we should uh, have some type of weapon that could take down a robot if it turns Vogue. I mean, not Vogue, Rogue. You know? <laughs> Vogue is like... <laughs> so if a robot started going Vogue, that wouldn't be dangerous. I meant Rogue. <laughs> That's funny. At the palace, Dunmore announced that he was simply securing the powder in the event of a slave insurrection, you see? They're saying like, oh, well, we took it to prevent, you know, from the slaves from getting it. When in actuality, it really hurt the Virginians. You see, your enemy can say, oh, we're doing it for your safety. When in reality, they're doing it for themselves. But the royal governor barely concealed his fury and contempt, later calling the crowd one of the highest insults that could be offered to the authority of his majesty's government. Dunmore was especially angry about the presence of militia in Williamsburg, noting that the colonists were treating with him under the muskets of their independent company, which they left only a little distance from my house. Two days later, Dunmore arrested two of the company's leaders. It was then that he struck... On Saturday, April 22, 1775, Dunmore announced that by living God he would declare freedom to the slaves and reduce the city of Williamsburg to ashes. Should there be further injury or insult to the royal establishment? That is strong language. Reduce it. Reduce Williamsburg to ashes. Dracarys. Reaction was swift and predictable. From Pennsylvania, a colonist wrote a friend overseas. Hell itself could not vomit anything more black than this design of emancipating our slaves. Look at this. So, a colonist of Pennsylvania. So, some alt-right weirdos get really mad when you use the word colonist. They say, oh, well, that's Marxist term. Well, no, you know, it's an actually, they were, they colonized that part and, you know, called themselves that, essentially. So, it's not a political, like a modern political degradation. It's simply an accurate, you know, description. Wow. Think about that. So giving slaves freedom is hellish to the colonists. See that kind of language? Colonists with slaveholding sympathies either began or accelerated their preparations for war. Jefferson among them. Wow. Jefferson was obsessed with politics of the continental crisis. In a Sunday, May 7, 1775, Letter to his old teacher, William Small, in England, Jefferson interrupted himself at one point to say, But for God's sake, where am I to go? Forever absorbed in the distress of my country, I cannot, for three sentences, keep clear of its political struggles. Yeah, I mean, if you love your country and you're very political, it's because he was obsessed with politics, you cannot help but be involved, and you kind of should be involved, really, you know, if you think about it. Yet he could not help himself within this week. He wrote to Small, We have received the unhappy news of an action of considerable magnitude between the King's troops and of our brethren of Boston. Brethren of Boston. The fact that blood was shed under such circumstances, Jefferson said, seemed to doom prospects for a peaceful resolution. Small died in Birmingham, England, before Jefferson's letter reached him. Dunmore's seizure of the gunpowder and his statements about the slaves and flame matters in Jefferson's immediate world. Well, yeah, for sure. In Albemarle County, the militia declared they wanted to demand satisfaction of Dunmore for the power and his threatening to fix his standard and call over to the black people. They used a different word, but I cannot say that on YouTube. To Jefferson, Dunmore was the particular manifestation of a universal truth. The British were unbending, apparently uninterested, and even affecting an air of respect toward the Americans. The bolder the Americans grew, the surer the British seemed, ever sensitive to slights and conscious of the alchemy of human relationships. That's nice. That's a, that's a good way to word it. Conscious of the alchemy of human relationships, so the chemistry, it's a good synonym, in which respect, rivalry, affection, and deference were bound together in varying and changing proportions. Jefferson was able to detect such shifts in the political realm, as well as in his personal one. He offered an astute analysis of the British approach. A little knowledge of human nature and attention to its ordinary workings might have foreseen that the spirits of the people here were in a state in which they were more likely to be provoked 
then frightened by haughty deportment. Haughty. Haughty. <laughs> wow. Dang, man. Done more done. Took the gunpowder. Slave certain to, you know, demanding freedom, trying to take some action back. Interesting. Good. Continental crisis. Reduce the city to ashes. 15 barrels. Basically disarming Virginians. John Singleton Copley. The flame of civil war. Rage with violence equal to what has ever been done in any country at any time. British troops, American cultures, classing in Lexington and Concord on Wednesday, April 19th, 1775. Whew. Gives me goosebumps. It's intense. What do you think, family? What do you think? Liberty!